Ever since I was a young kid, I've always been enamored with the relationship between things, how objects in our world relate to each other. I've always found that looking for that invisible thread that kind of connects everything to be just amazing once you find it. Example, one of my favorite examples is music. We have an individual that picks up an instrument, and that instrument manipulates sound, it manipulates air. That air travels to our ears, and our brains turn that into sound. Before I know this, it's just magic. A very talented person takes an instrument, and magically I'm hearing music. But then once I break that down, and I see that relationship, now there's a better understanding, and the world starts to make a little bit more sense, a little less magic. What I really like about finding these things out in the world, these relationships, this, the cause and effect between things, is every time I learn a new one, a, a new relationship, it allows me to see the world in a different way. It allows me to see the world in a way where we're all connected. It sounds like a nice place. I'm very lucky to have a career in software development. Uh, my career allows me to interact with emerging technologies and play with very, very fun gadgets. What's nice about these technologies and these gadgets is when they make it into our office, we get excited, we play with them like little children for a bit, and then at some point we've gotta you know, get to work. But when we get to work, it's fun to look at the relationship between this new technology and this new gadget and how it's going to move forward. How are we going to use this? How are we going to use this application, this code, this hardware to affect people in the future? And at the same time, it's nice to step back and also look at what brought this technology to us. What problems were there that needed to be solved and that solution caused this to, to land on our desk. Right there is a fun relationship of present and future and past to present. Now, of these new technologies and these new emerging, uh, these new emerging hardware, software, my favorite are robotics and artificial intelligence. Let me start with robotics. What I find fascinating about ro robotics is the design of it and how we tend to design these things to reflect ourselves. If I were to ask most people what's a robot, they would start to describe something with two legs, torso, some arms, and a head very much in the image of ourselves. And it makes me wonder, why do we, why do, we do that? Why, why do we put ourselves so much into this technology, but then at the same time, we feel the technology is so far away from us? So it's cold, right, compared to, to our humanity. Examples are, lately, they've been creating drones, drones that are programmed like bees, all right? So this thing will hover around you, when you go to swat it away, it'll move away and then come back at you. They're also moving drones around like flocks of birds. And like I said earlier, the robots that look like us, us bipeds. But then when they go into robots that are uh, hitting all-terrain, rough climates, they tend to model those after the animals that are able to survive in those climates. Once again, us putting ourselves and the natural world around us into this technology. Now moving to AI. Currently with AI, we're creating artificial neural networks. These networks are there to model our brains. Once again, taking ourselves and putting it into the technology. Now some feel that by doing this, by creating this artificial intelligence that is slowly catching up to where we are, our intelligence, that at some point, an event's going to happen, and things are going to take off. This artificial intelligence 
intelligence is just going to become smarter and smarter, faster than we could imagine. They have a term for it, and it's called singularity. Singularity is a term that was coined in 1950 by a man called John von Neumann. This theory says that the invention of a super artificial intelligence will far surpass the human intelligence and go places that we can't even imagine. This intelligence will be able to upgrade itself. And then that will cause an intelligence explosion that will be something our civilization has never seen. Now, I think you know what comes next. The computers rise up, and then our robotic overlords take over. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about that today. Uh, I'm going to take a step back. I want to talk more about the relationship of us and this artificial intelligence, this us and these, this, these robotics that we keep pushing closer and closer to who we are. We put ourselves in there. What I find fascinating about this is that by looking at this technology that we make, we can actually see a reflection of ourselves. We can actually start to see how we think of ourselves in this universe. With artificial intelligence, you have to, I have to ask myself, okay, we have this relationship with this technology. And in a complex world, things aren't, very, aren't one dimensional. A lot of times we have lots of two dimensional, three dimensional, we live in three dimensional space. And so is there another thread? We have this thread between us, artificial intelligence. Is there another thread that connects us to something that is very much like our relationship with artificial intelligence? Is there something out there that engineered our intelligence, that used its image and helped make us bring us to this point? I think about the universe and I think about ourselves and how you can find most of the elements in our body all over the universe. And to me, that feels like being made in the image of something. Then I think about how we create this artificial intelligence and we put it through trials, right? It goes out into the world and we test it and it fails or it succeeds. Very much like the universe has, throws tons of trials and challenges at us and we adapt, we grow, and then we pass these things off to another generation who will then try to surpass us, much like artificial intelligence is, is moving forward. Now, like I said earlier, some people believe that is the coming of the robot overlords, but I don't see it that way. I see it as an opportunity. If there is this relationship between the universe and us, us and this new intelligence that we're creating, that means is as we move forward with that intelligence, we're also moving forward with understanding where we are in this universe. And we also move forward with understanding ourselves, going in and looking at the, the, the very complicated and the nuances of our brain and how that works, and then taking that and applying it to artificial intelligence. It's almost like, you know, on the surface, we're creating this technology to move faster, to take in information better, comprehend the world around it better. But I see it twofold, because as that moves forward, then we also get this chance to understand ourselves, understand what it is that was so special about us that we need to now pass it on to this new emerging intelligence. I think that's very cool. Now, let's take a step forward. Let's look at more relationships that we have, that we have with our electronics, our gadgets, these new intelligences. If I sit here and I rub my feet on this carpet, I'll build up, build up a charge. And if I go and I contact with someone, they'll get zapped. There's this electricity that passes from me into this person, this connection, right? And it shows that there is a connection all around us, 
right? That invisible thread that's kind of tying us all together. Very much like, now, this electrical charge that's, you know, between us all, it's very much like a computer. When you turn it on, it needs that constant charge. That charge is charging up all its parts, getting it all to work together. And without that charge, things start to die out. And with this computer, if I were to crack it open and take a look at all of the electrical boards and the circuits in there, it very much looks like a little city with these little roads that take information from one place to another, running through transistors and conductors that look like little buildings that have their own little purpose, right? very much like our cities. And then when I get up in the morning and I drive to work, we jump on these highways and we stream, just stream along from town to town, city to city, and carry along with us the information that we, that we have inside. Kind of reminds me of bits on a spherical hard drive. So with that, as things are just getting closer and closer, and we start to just see ourselves in this technology, but yet we also see ourselves in this universe, I begin to ask myself the question, how different from this, this technology are we? Are we not just robots creating other robots? And then the inverse of this is how human, how alive is this intelligence that we're starting to, to, to bring up and have emerge in pretty much everything in our life? So, I feel that there is more of a connection with the things that we are creating, that connection, that thread that goes between all of us and all the things around us. And instead of looking at it as something where it's this cold, kind of hard hardware, as opposed to an extension of ourselves. So maybe instead of this world changing intelligence, maybe we're just kind of hitting singularity at a different degree. First, there was a singularity of us, where we were put into the universe, and then finally we hit a point where we start to surpass. We start to make our own homes. We started to create faster transportation. We got to the moon. Things that the universe I don't think intended for us. And now we're talking about colonizing inhabitable planets. And how does that relate to this new singularity that we talk about, where the computers start to do stuff that we never intended? So I ask you again, could we be the robots? Thank you. <laughs>